Welcome to part two of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this stylized desert scene. If you haven't seen part one, then definitely check out the tutorial playlist with the link in the description. And in this part, we're going to be doing the lighting, we're going to be creating the sky background, and then after we're done with the lighting, we'll be creating the materials for these cacti objects. And if you'd like to purchase the finished project files of this tutorial, as well as help support the channel, you can get that on my Gumroad store and Patreon page with the links in the description. And also on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, you can get access to lots more Blender content like 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials, geometry node, modifier setups, and lots more Blender content. And then before we start with this part, I wanted to let you know about my sci-fi construction robot tutorial series. So that is an 11 part tutorial series and it's all step by step in real time. And throughout the course, I show you how to create this rigged animated sci-fi construction robot. So the course goes through the entire process, including modeling the robot, doing all the materials, rigging the robot, and even animating the robot to create this finished robot animation. If you're interested in learning more about the course, you can check out the product trailer video with the link in the description description and the product links to the course will be in the description. So let's do the lighting. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view and I'm going to go over here to the render engine and I'm going to be using the EV rendering engine. Now you could totally use cycles if you want to but I'm going to be using EV. So I'll change that over to EV and then just make sure that you have the screen space reflections turned on and also the ambient occlusion and that's going to make EV look a bit more realistic. Now also to make the colors look a bit nicer, we're gonna go here to the render properties and we're gonna scroll all the way down and we're gonna go to the very bottom here where the color management settings are. And I'm gonna use the view transform of Filmic and I'm gonna make the look very high contrast. So this will pop out the colors and make things more contrasted and saturated. Now there isn't really any main light source, so let's add a light source. So I'll go to the add menu. Let's go down here to light and I'm just gonna add a sunlight. We're just going to rotate the sunlight up like this and also rotate it back slightly. And let's also select these objects here and I can bring them back a little bit so they're not casting a shadow on the smaller cacti. Now, if you select the sunlight and go to the light settings, I want to change a few of the values. So this angle here, I want to turn it to zero so that the sunlight is very sharp. And then also here on the strength, I'm going to turn this up to a six so that it is quite a bit brighter. And here on the color, I'm going to make this look a little bit more yellow so it'll look more like desert light. And if you want to use the exact same sunlight color that I'm using, then you can use the same hex value. So the sunlight color here is going to be a hex value of FFD2A8. That's the color that I find to work well, just kind of a nice yellowish light. So now let's create the background and we're going to be creating a procedural sky background. So to do this, let's go to the shading workspace and I'll go into that rendered view. And here on the shader editor, I actually want to work with the world nodes instead of the object nodes. So here on object, we're going to change this over to the world instead. And let's zoom in here to the background. And right now you can see it's just a blank color, but I instead want to add a cool procedural sky texture. So I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for sky and we're going to add in this built-in sky texture texture and let's plug the color up to the color. I want to change the type of sky texture so I'm going to click here and I'm going to change it to the Hosack Wilkie. So now you can see we have some really nice sky lighting. There's kind of like this blue here and there's kind of a horizon. And then there's this little circle here that we can drag around to kind of change the time of day and change how the lighting looks. So I'm going to drag the light down a little bit and kind of over to the side, just something like that. And this first value right here, I'm going to turn this to a value of one. So that makes it kind of a bit brighter. And then this ground albedo, this value right here, I want to turn this up to like a 0.5. So it just makes the whole thing a little bit brighter as well. And then I want to select the sky texture and I'm going to press control T and that is using the node wrangler add on. And it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I'm going to use this mapping to squish the texture down a bit because in the camera view, it's going to be a bit hard to see this gradient here, but if I scale it down on the Z, that's going to kind of squish it down, so you're going to be able to see it a bit better. So I'm going to scale this down on the scale Z. I'm going to scale this by three, so it is just squished down a little bit. Now I also want to create some clouds, and to do that, we're going to add a noise texture. So I can just go to the Add menu, and let's search for a noise texture. We're going to drop the noise texture up here, and let's Control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So that's using the Node Wrangler add-on. When you hold down the Control and Shift key and select different nodes, that's going to preview the node. Let's also take the object coordinates and we'll plug that up to the vector and the object coordinates will place the noise texture more evenly. 
Now I also want to squish the noise texture down to actually make it look like clouds. So we're going to go to the add menu and we're going to search for another mapping node and we'll put this before the noise texture right here. And then we can take this scale Z value and we can drag this up to kind of squish it down to make it look more like clouds. So I'm going to turn this Z value to a six to kind of squish it down. And then we can also change some of the noise settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 12. I'm also going to turn the detail to the max of 15. And then this roughness, I'll turn this up to like a point. So we're going to use that to look like clouds, but I want to make it more contrasty. So there's just some parts where the clouds are. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a color ramp. We'll put the color ramp here after the noise texture. So now if I drag these two values together, that is going to make it more contrasty. So wherever the white parts are, that is where the clouds are going to be. So by turning this black value up like this, there's just going to be a few clouds here and there. So I'm going to just bring that value to about there and that one over to about there. Now we need to mix it together with the sky texture. So what I'm going to do is drag the background and the world output here and let's plug the background into the surface. So then to mix these two colors together, I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a mix color to mix two colors together. And we're going to put this here after the sky texture. And I want the sky texture to be going into color A. And then this color ramp color, this is going to go into the factor. Now the factor is determining what parts are going to be color A and what parts are going to be color B. So now color B, this is going to be the color of the clouds. So we can just make this fully white. So now it looks like there's some little white clouds. Now I also want to edit the colors of the sky texture just a little bit. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the RGB curves and we'll put this between the sky texture and the mix. So just stick it right there and then we can just change some of the colors. So I'm going to first click and drag a dot down here and then click and add another dot and kind of drag this up here. And this is going to make it look a bit more contrasty. And then I'll click here on the R for red and I want to drag this up a little bit slightly more into this corner to kind of bring up the red just a little bit. And then if I go here to the blue, click on B for blue, I can drag this out just a little bit to pop out the blue colors. All right, and that is it for the procedural sky. So I can click here on the world and I can change the shader type back to object instead so we can do the materials. So I'm first going to start by creating the spike material. So if you open up the outliner and click here to unhide the spike, we want to just select the spike object. Let's click on new here to add a new material and I can just rename this material to spike. And this material is going to be really simple. I'm just going to turn the roughness up to like a 0.75 so it's a bit more rough. And then for the color here, I'm going to make this kind of like a light gray and it's going to be slightly towards the yellow. And the exact same color that I'm going to be using is a hex value of CCC397. So I can now click here on this check mark here just to hide the spike because we don't really need it. And let's just minimize these. All right, so we can do the next material. So let's just select the cacti. So we've already started to make the cactus material in the previous part, but I'm going to be finishing it now. So in the previous part, we already added this wave texture, but let's continue on by creating the colors. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to add a color ramp to add the colors and we'll put the color ramp here between the wave texture and the principled shader. So I'll be creating a lighter green color on one of the tabs and a darker green color on the other tab. And if you want to use the same colors I'm using, the lighter green is going to be a hex value of five, six, 7D49. And then this darker tab here, the darker green, this is going to be a hex value of 31. 5931. So if I control shift and select the color ramp to preview it, you can see it's just these lighter lines and darker lines. So let's control shift and select the principled shader. Also the roughness here on the principled shader, let's turn this up to like a 0.7 so it is a bit more rough. And then I also just want to add a noise texture to make the surface look a little bit bumpy. So I'll go to the add menu and I can just search for a noise texture and let's put this under the wave texture and this mapping vector can go into the vector of the noise texture and then the noise texture factor that can go into the normal of the principled shader. But then I need to convert the noise texture color into bump data. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a bump node and we'll put it here between the noise and the principled shader and then the factor can go into the height value and that'll actually convert it to bump data. So if we just wait for this to load up in Blender Eevee, it's going to look really bumpy. And there we go, it looks pretty bumpy, but it's a bit hard to see what's happening. And that's because we need to change some of the noise settings. So I'm going to turn the scale up to like an eight and I'll turn the detail all the way up to 15 and I'll leave the other settings how they are. 
So this is looking way too bumpy. So here on the bump strength, I'm gonna turn this way down to just like a 0.1, so it's very subtle. But now if I look really close up, you can see there's just a little bit of subtle bump on the cacti. Now it is a bit hard to notice, but the noise texture is actually being stretched up and down a bit. And that is because it's using the UV here, but I instead want it to use the object coordinates so it places the texture on the object more evenly. So let's put the object here into the vector of the noise texture. And now it's gonna be a bit smaller it's not going to be quite as stretched. And there it is. That looks quite a bit better, and it's more even now. So that is going to be it for the basic cactus material. So now let's do the other material here for the small cacti. So I'm going to select one of the cacti. Let's click on new to add a new material. I can just call it small cacti. And then what I can do is hold down the shift key and we're going to select all of the small cacti. And then lastly, shift select the one which has the material. So this one is now the active object. So I'll press Control L and we're gonna click on Link Materials. So if I select them all now, you can see they all have the same material. So let's do the material now for this cacti. So I wanna add some little dots to the cacti. So I'll go to the Add menu and let's search for a Voronoi texture. I'll drop this up here and then I can plug the Voronoi distance into the base color. And also with the Voronoi texture selected, I'm gonna press Control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And let's use the object coordinate. So I'll put the object into the vector. So it places the texture more evenly on the object. And then we can change a few of the settings of the Voronoi. So on the scale here, I'm gonna turn this up to a 20, and then I'll leave the other settings how they are. Now, I wanna make this a bit more contrasty, so I'll go to the Add menu, and I'm gonna search for a color ramp, and we'll put this between the Voronoi and the principal shader. And then if I drag these two values together, that's gonna to make them more contrasty, so we just have some little dots. So I'll drag them over, kinda of like that, so it's much more contrasty. And I think the dots are a little bit small, so maybe I'll turn the scale just down to like an 18. That might be a little bit better. Turn the Voronoi scale to 18 or maybe even like a 16. So now let's make the colors for the color ramp. So instead of it just being black and white, I'm gonna make it kind of like a grayish greenish color. So here on the black color, let's make it kind of like a gray color and then make it a bit green. And then here on this color, this color is gonna be just more like a regular green. It's still gonna be a little bit dark though. And if you wanna use the same colors that I'm using, here on the first tab, this is gonna be a hex value of 4E. 593B and the second color tab this is going to be 497338. So we kind of have a few different shades of green, but they're kind of like a grayish green color. And then also here on the roughness, let's turn the roughness to like 8.6, so it's a little bit less shiny. And then I also want to add some values into the bump. So I'll go to the Add menu, and we're going to add a bump node so we can convert color data into bump data. So let's put the bump node here. And I want the Voronoi dots to look like they're bumping out of the mesh. So let's put the distance value into the height value of the bump. And then the bump normal can go into the normal of the principal shader. Now we're gonna to need to make it more contrasty because that's like way too bumpy. So let's click on this color ramp here. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and we can drop a color ramp in between the Voronoi and the bump. So just drop it right there. And then with this color ramp selected, I'll hit the backspace just to reset it. But then I can click on the white tab and I can drag this over and that way it's gonna make the bump smaller. So I'm just gonna drag this to about there. So now we just have a few little bumps here and there. So they kind of look like these circular bumps. But then you can see the bumps are going in and I instead want them to be popping out. So let's choose the invert button so that they look like they're popping out instead. And then they're really strong right now and they're kind of dark. So if I just turn the strength down to like a 0.3, they still look like they're popping out, but not quite as much. And then I also just want to add a noise texture to the surface to make it look a little bit noisy. So I'll go to the add menu and let's just search for a noise texture and I can put it under the Voronoi and we want the mapping vector can to go into the vector of the noise texture. And then I wanna put the noise texture into the bump. So let's first control shift and select the bump just to preview it and I'll change some of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to a 16 and I'll turn the detail to the max of 15 and I'll turn this roughness up to like a 0.56 so it's a bit more rough. So now we can take this bump node and I can duplicate it. Let's drop it here. We can also put the normal into the normal and that way we can mix multiple bump maps together. And then the noise texture factor can go into the height value. 
And let's control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. And we'll just wait for this to load up in Blender EV. And I don't want to invert it. So let's just click on the invert there so it's not inverted. And that is quite a bit too strong. So we'll turn the strength value down to just like a 0.1 so it is more subtle. All right, and that is going to be it for the small cacti material. All right, press control S to save. And this will finish it up for part two of the tutorial series. So in the next part, we're going to be creating the small pebbles and then also the large rocks. And then we'll be creating some basic procedural materials for those objects. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and the link will also be in the video description. And if you're enjoying this tutorial series and you'd like to help support me and this channel, then definitely consider checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page, where you can get access to lots of Blender content, and you can also help to support the channel. So if you'd like to help support the channel monthly, then joining one of my Patreon memberships is a great way to do that, or if you just like to make a one-time purchase of one of my products, my Gumroad store is a great place to do that. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.